Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Again, that's the book of Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. And it reads, Accept him whose faith is weak without passing judgment on disputable matters. One man's faith allows him to eat everything, but another man whose faith is weak eats only vegetables. The man who eats everything must not look down on him who does not. And the man who does not eat everything must not condemn the man who does not, for God has accepted him. Who are you to judge someone else's servant? To his own master he stands or falls, and he will stand for the Lord is able to make him stand. One man considers one day more sacred than another. Another man considers every day alike. Each one should be fully convinced in his own mind. He who regards one day as a special does so to the Lord. He who eats meat eats to the Lord, for he gives thanks to God. And he who abstains does so to the Lord and gives thanks to God. I just read to you Romans chapter 14, verses 1 through 6. Let us stand and do that. That's what you were to do.
last Christmas. One man received a visa bill in the month, and every month um, that from the year before, and he refused to pay anything on it. Well, when he received his last bill in December, it had the total said, sir, this is the amount that you owe. But on the side note, someone attached another note that says, dear Mr. Johnny, this bill is now a year old. Well, Mr. Johnny looked at it, smiled at it, typed up a letter, put the note back attached to it, and he sent the note back, and the person opened it up, and it says, happy birthday, Mr. B. So, understand, <laughs> there's some people that never forget Christmas, and if you spend too much money, you're going to always remember, because now you're trying to catch up with all the bills that you accumulated because you wanted to look good in front of folks for Christmas. Now, with Christmas meaning a lot of things to a lot of people, I actually asked some folks, what does Christmas mean to you? Some people told me that Christmas means family to them. But if that's the case, what does Christmas mean to a person who has recently lost a loved one? What does it mean to a person that lives in an orphanage? What does it mean to a person that no longer has family if Christmas is to mean family? Another person said Christmas means shopping malls and Santa Claus and Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer, okay. Christmas trees and blinking lights. Mm -hmm. Well, if that's the case, what does Christmas mean to a family who lives in, uh, let me think of a place, Africa, Ghana, and they have no electricity, so they ain't gonna get no blinking lights. If they live in a place where there is no God, matter of fact, if we're in certain places in God, there is no shopping mall. And there are places and places and people out there that never heard of Santa, never heard of Rudolph, let alone seen a Christmas tree. What about those people if Christmas means that? Another person told me that Christmas means giving and receiving gifts. If that's the case, what does Christmas mean to that single parent of three or four kids? Working two jobs, barely have enough money to pay rent, electric bill, and food. And giving them everything but the necessities of life. What does giving and giving, giving and receiving gifts have to do with that family? Another one said Christmas means snow falling from the sky and covering the ground and bare tree limbs and Jack Frost nipping at your nose. Jack Frost got one time to come out of me. Okay. <laughs> I don't really too much like Jack Frost because that's why I stay down here. <laughs> Notice it's Christmas Eve and it's warm outside. Amen. I love that. I grew up in Christmas where there was snowing. I no longer desire to have that. But what's the case? If that's the case, if Christmas is about snowing and, and all that good stuff, what does it mean to the person who lives in Arizona and they ain't going to see nobody snow? Y'all see how I mean how people's mindset of what Christmas means to them. I'm not saying anything is wrong with it, but we have to be mindful that some folks believe that Christmas means a certain thing. And because Christmas holiday season, we've come to say that tis the season to be jolly. Yeah. It's a time of ornaments and decorations and silver bells and mistletoes and chestnuts roasting on an open fire. And that Jack Falls nipping at your nose. I heard the song last night, so it's in my head. It also is a time of department store Santas where who have the bad breath and a child sitting on their lap and children have to tell them what they want for Christmas. And then you hear him say, ho, 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 Merry Christmas. But also Christmas has known to come to be, this is the time to show goodwill to all men. This is the time for folk to actually act right. Even children who have good sense know it's time to act right to at least the 25th or 24th. So at least now when the 25th comes, now the families like ours act the fool on Christmas Day, we would take it back. But is that what really Christmas is supposed to mean? Is the question. Is Christmas supposed to mean all those things? Now, here's what I need you to know. Because I don't know what's going so not going to take this off. Okay. It's don't misunderstand, and I'm not saying anything about Christmas. I'm not saying anything, anything is wrong or bad about Christmas. I'm not even against Christmas. But you have to understand, to me, Christmas 
It's no different than any other holiday. I'm not against Christmas at all because here's the thing. Christmas not only being another day like another holiday, it's because what makes Christmas so good is it's a day off and you get paid for it. Somebody missed that. So don't worry about it. You, you have to work on that day, I understand. But what I'm saying is don't, I can't beat you up because you celebrate Christmas a different way than I do. I don't have any babies at home anymore. I don't have any, my grandkids not here. When they do come, then I'm going to pull out the red carpet. So that's why there's no lights up in my house and no trees up in my house. Because again, if you know me well enough, if I have to put up a tree, it's not coming down until May or June. Because I don't put up a tree because I don't like taking it down. I don't like doing nothing after I've got to take it down. But understand, that's just me. So, and for some religious folk, Christmas, they try to make it such a big thing about it because Christmas was started as a Roman Catholic church thing that was started on the same day as a pagan holiday or winter festival. So many people say, if you are celebrating Christmas, you're wrong. Now remember, I told you I had no problem with it. Now I'll show you something about why people can believe that if they want to believe. So those type of people make a point to tell you they will not celebrate Christmas or they'll be a part of it. Then that's fine. Let them not celebrate but don't let them not celebrate and prevent you from celebrating. Let me help you out. When I hear people say that you don't celebrate Christmas because it's a pagan holiday, it has something to do with Roman Greek gods and all that stuff. That's why people stop and they learn to say, hey, before I say something wrong, because he may say something back. Let me show you why that argument doesn't hold water. Because if Everybody, I should say, observes the Christmas holiday in some form or another. Everybody who says they're not going to celebrate it, some kind of way they may still celebrate. Let me prove it to you. If a person doesn't believe in celebrating Christmas, and they get the day off of Christmas, guess what they just did? They observe Christmas. I don't care how you look at it, then if you don't want it, you don't celebrate anymore, don't take the money and go to work. Uh -huh. What I'm saying is, by you saying what you're not going to do in that shot, you are observing it because you're taking the day off and you're getting paid. Right. Let me have some more folks out. If you do work on Christmas, I heard they get overtime. Double overtime at some point. So guess what happened if they did have to work? They just observe Christmas because that's benefits because of Christmas. Let's even take it a little bit better. I'm not going to observe Christmas. But your boss man, a boss lady, gave you a bonus check. And you cashed that check. Guess what you just did? You observed Christmas. So I'm just let you know how some people are just like, okay. So don't argue with people, but just let them know. Matter of fact, let's even get a little better. This is the part I like. If you eat some Christmas cookies. Okay. Now I'm running back to my head. Look at the cookies. Snacks them all along. If you eat some cake, if you eat some treats that someone brought, if someone gives you some, oh, we're bringing this by because of breakfast, Christmas time. We're bringing some, you go by somebody's house and you eat lunch on Christmas Day. You eat uh, dinner on Christmas Day. Guess what you just did? You observed Christmas. So for those people that want to argue what they don't do, pay attention to their lives because sometimes we, in essence, are saying what we're not going to do, we actually are doing. So here's what's even more ironic. For people who claim that they don't observe Christmas because it's associated with paganism or it's associated with, with mythology or Roman stuff. Here's the kicker. Did you know that every day of the week has some connection with paganism? I did until I did this little research. Here's what I mean. Monday was named after the moon. Pagan religion from um, the Romans. Tuesday was named after Tate Tyr, the Norse god of war. 
Williams State was named after Wu, which is basically Odin, which was the most powerful god in Greek mythology. So just know that I know this. That what I did know. Thursday was named after Thor, who's a god of thunder. Friday was named after Freya, the goddess of love and beauty. Saturday was named after the uh, Roman god Saturn. And Sunday was named after the sun. So that means every time you get a day off of work, or I'll say I'll see you on such and such day, technically they are observing something that has a connection with paganism or Greek mythology. So that's why we have to be careful when you say something, because in essence, you may be doing exactly the same thing that you claim that you're not going to do. You just didn't know that was a bigger picture to you. So we have to be careful when you judge folks for things, because sometimes we may be doing exactly the same thing in principle that we're judging other folks for. So if you don't celebrate Christmas, that's cool. Don't. But I ain't seen not a person <laughs> that don't celebrate Christmas that gave back a gift that somebody gave them. Now, when I see, because everybody always films something on Facebook, film that. Let me see somebody give you a Christmas. Oh, I don't celebrate Christmas. I don't want that Rolex watch. You can keep that. Y'all see the hypocrisy in that? So what I'm saying is that somebody says, I want to give you this because it's Christmas and you stand in line. I want to pay for your um, Starbucks. And I don't believe in Christmas. No, that's all right. I don't want it. You're crazy. Okay. You know how much Starbucks is? Okay. okay. That, I love Starbucks. What I'm saying is people will say one thing, but they'll do another. Don't be a hypocrite by doing that. So my point is we should regard Christmas as we do any other holiday. Man. We all need to be careful to understand that Christmas is no different than Mother's Day. It's no different than Father's Day. It's no different than Martin Luther King's Day. It's a holiday. So let me show you why judging folks who put up Christmas trees, people who put up lights, people who put up wreaths and nativity, nativity, nativity scenes and Christmas displays in their yards and other Christmas paraphernalia. If you have it in your yard, that's your yard. Now, my thing is, if you want to run electricity bill up that high, that's great that you can afford it. Okay. <laughs> but don't down someone because they, they're Christian and they shouldn't have all that. Let me get you. Here's what Christians who believe Christians to celebrate is wrong will say in the heart. Because someone said it to me. It was like, well, preacher, what if people drive by your house and they see that you have a Christmas tree up in your window? That means folks are going to assume that uh, you celebrate, you observe a pagan holiday. That's a Roman Catholic day. So, you know, I'm like, okay. Now, you know I was upset. I just smiled. You know, that little hamster was running in my head. I could hear it <laughs> turning. So my answer was, first of all, um, if they claim they saw a tree up in my window, you ought to know they're lying. Okay. Okay, somebody, you know me. Because everybody knows I ain't putting up no tree. So that's the first thing. But secondly, to, to, to get to your argument, what if someone drives by my house knowing I'm a preacher and don't see any lights, don't see any trees, don't see no ornaments, no display in my yard, no nothing? Will they assume that I'm an atheist because they don't see a Christmas display? Okay. Notice how I just flipped the whole thing. People say if they see this, you're observing something, but if they don't see something, are they, does that mean they're going to assume that I'm an atheist? I don't believe in God. I don't believe in celebrating. Okay. So sometimes we have to be careful. I always just say be careful who you're fooling because you might be trying to be sleep. They may be two hands old. Okay. So as I read it, Colossians, okay, I'm glad somebody got that. Colossians 2 John verse 20, 2 John verse 26. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or respect of holy day or of a new moon or Sabbath day. What's that mean? Paul's point was to say that we as Christians are not to dispute and argue with folks, or even ourselves, over insignificant matters, nor sit in the judgment of them. If you don't celebrate it, don't. But don't judge folks who do. So his other point in the, in the text is that their salvation, or I should say our salvation, doesn't depend upon observing dietary rules or specific festivals. Notice what I'm saying. Whether or not you 
uh, observe this particular um, observance of something doesn't have anything to do with your salvation. So if you um, celebrate Christmas, what they got to do with your salvation? Okay. Absolutely nothing. Because if anything, I'm telling you, there are people that tell you you're not supposed to celebrate your birthday. They're, they got the scripture here. When I saw it, I was like, you're using that. So if you celebrate your birthday, you just as wrong. And it's the same folk to tell you women don't wear no makeup. You're supposed to wear, no supposed to wear dresses down your ankles, long sleeve shirts, turtleneck, no makeup, no nothing. You just have to say, if that's the way you believe, believe that. Okay. But don't beat up people Amen. who want to, because the Bible says don't wear braids. I see braids all up in here. Amen. Don't wear pearls. And all kind of glitter gold, everything. I see gold. People miss what the Bible's teaching in order to make a point. So why is this important? Because none of those things have anything to do with your salvation. It was a point of something he was addressing. The point is that Paul was trying to say is only Jesus is the judge. Only Jesus can judge your heart as to why you're doing what you're doing. So the question is, is Paul implying that if you're a Christian, then you are saved whether or not you keep the festival days or not. That's what Paul was trying to basically imply. So we go to our text, Romans 14, chapter, but I want to read verses 5 and 6. One person esteems one day above another. Another esteems every day alike. Let each be fully convinced in his own mind. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord. And he who does not observe the day to the Lord, he does not observe it. He who eats, eats to the Lord. He who gives thanks, or he gives thanks, God thanks. And he who does not eat to the Lord, he does not eat and give God thanks. So Paul is saying that there will always be someone who has a high regard for specific days, specific festivals, specific holy days, or specific holidays. There are some people that don't care about no other holiday, but they will turn up for their birthday. Not only will they turn up for their birthday, they start at the first of the month and end at the end of the month. So there are certain days that certain people hold more high in esteem than others. But then there's some folks who would consider every day as a Lord's day. Okay. That every day should be devoted to the glory of God and, and every opportunity is an advancement to the Lord. There are some people who believe that, all, that the Lord's day is Saturday. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. You know people say that and they only believe that Sunday is the Lord's day. But then you got to understand that one day from Genesis first chapter tells you which day did God not make? He made them all, right? So that means all days of the Lord. But there's some people who have different mindsets with things. So in other words, those holy days, those holidays, those, uh, those things are not binding to us as Christians. So I've heard someone say, i got to work on Thanksgiving. I hate my job. you got a job. Amen. They don't have to give you all. They don't have to give you all. If anything, actually, the way I think of you own your own business, technically, they want you to give off two days, two days to give in the, the, the year, the calendar year. And most places give you 4th of July and Christmas. Some give you Memorial Day and Christmas. Where I work at, we get almost all of them. As long as I'm getting paid for it, we can have every one. But if we ain't getting paid for it, I want to go to work. That's just me. Amen. Understand when you, when you get older, it makes sense. So, for this reason, let everyone, each person, be convinced in his own mind. This means that every Christian should examine themselves as to whether or not they're going to participate in a ceremonial, ceremonial observance of certain days. This is up to you and not to anyone else. Verse number six. He who observes the day observes it to the Lord, and he who does not observe the day to the Lord does not observe it. Simply saying, if someone keeps the festivals, his purpose is to honor God by having a religious observance of him of that day. On the other hand, if a person finds himself that they cannot uh, observe as a holiday because of their belief in God or their religious belief, that's fine. Me observing Christmas is not binding on anyone. But here's the thing, when it comes to the church, everybody may not agree with it. So guess what you do at your own home that you don't do here? 
You don't bring a, church, a, a tree in here. You don't put lights up all in the church. You don't put grapes and all that because you may offend someone. Do that in your own home. You can do whatever you want to in your own home because you do it anyway. Yeah. Don't let nobody know. What I'm saying is when it comes to the church building, keep holy things or God things separate from the worldly things. It's just a holiday. That's all it is. So if anyone still has a question me afterwards, I'm giving the short version. We can have the long version after worship. But understand that this is nothing but a day. God made all the days, and to God, all the days are the same. Matter of fact, same text. Romans 14, verses 22 and 23. Paul says that we are to refrain from doing anything about what you have doubts about. Let me say it again. How hast thou hast faith? Heritage thyself before God. Have you used the common that condemn, con condemneth not himself, that thing which he allows. And he that doubteth is condemned if he eat, because he eateth not of faith, for whatever is not of faith is sin. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. That's simple. If you don't want to give nobody a Christmas present, don't give it to them. I always say, this is another reason why you know that you're being your son of observing Christmas. You don't have a problem taking them discounts and them, uh, them sales that they have, do you? All right. We'll go out there and buy, man, I found a tie the other day, and I was like, I'm just waiting on the day after Christmas because I know it's going to be cheap. Okay. So even if I didn't observe it, you still benefit from that day. So I want you to consider for a subject text simply is, what if there was no Christmas? What if there was no Christmas? With all the things we said, what if there was no Christmas? So. Here's what I'm asking. What if the Roman Catholic Church never created Christmas Day? One thing I do know, what I should say I love about the Christmas spirit is that people make an effort to do good and be good during Christmas. Have you ever notice that? I mean, what I'm saying is that there are people who are non-believers in Christ tend to show more love and compassion to other folk than believers do. You will see people giving more at this time of year than they never were before. I'm walking down um, the, the, whatever that place is where Burke's Island is, and I see this lady and this man sitting there. They ain't saying nothing to nobody. And I walked by the first time, because actually I was trying to get my numbers up on my Fitbit, so I walked two or three times, and I looked. I said, they balling. So uh, for a minute, I was like, maybe I should take my shoes off and sit right next to them so I can get paid too. But people started giving them now, wait next week this time. Them the same people I see at Walmart, too. Sitting right there as you come in, looking all sad. There ain't nobody gave. But notice this year, people don't mind giving. So it's a mindset that I'm going to do good for this one time. But the problem is, we should be this way all the time. We should be compassionate and show love toward other people all the time, not just at Christmas time. But another reason what makes Christmas decent or good because this is the one time for sure we know Jesus is going to be mentioned. This is the one time. Because folks don't know about no Easter. When they, when they think about the Easter, what do they think of? That bunny, hop, 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 and chop the king. But we know that they remember Jesus. This is the one time that we know people are going to say something about Jesus. Even if <coughs> me, they don't believe in everything about it, they're going to say something. Jesus' story is told. So someone might say, you know, the Bible doesn't specifically say when Jesus' birthday is. We know that the biblical events and historical evidence of the seasons of the time, when they were going down to do the census and all that stuff, we know, without a doubt, December 21st is not his birthday. We already just said they did it in accordance with someone else's holiday in order to try to show them what Christ was. So his birthday, matter of fact, what's your birthday? Ooh. And what day was it on this year? It was your birthday, you remember? I think it was during the week. But I know people, I ain't going to turn up on during the week. I'm going to turn up on the weekend. So my birthday is on a Monday, but I'm going to turn up on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. I ain't going to have the food during the week, but soon as Friday is, Friday night just got paid. So we don't have a problem when it's not our birthday on a certain day, but we'll turn up. And remember, from the first all the way to the end, somebody's turning up for their birthday. Amen. So 
It doesn't make a difference when his birthday is. It's still about a celebration to remind people that somebody came down here for your sorry tale to die. If anything, he came down here to save our sins. So regardless of whether or not it's Christmas or Christmas, when it was instituted, what if there was no Christmas? What if there was no Christmas to celebrate? Hey, this is what I like. If there was no Christmas here, guess what? One thing we can say, there will not be any ugly Christmas sweaters. <laughs> I have never seen so many ugly Christmas sweaters. And then they said, we're going to have an ugly Christmas party. Not me. I don't care if you got a Christian Christmas for 50 cents. I'm not putting Amen. it on. Amen. If there was no Christmas, there probably wouldn't be any candy canes. My favorite candy. Love candy canes. If there was no Christmas, we know there would be a Santa Claus. There wouldn't be a Charlie Brown Christmas story. I'm talking about stuff I like. There wouldn't be someone ringing a bell in front of Walmart asking for donations in this little pot. Everybody knows we don't care. Change more. Everybody swipes now. So I don't know why. It's like if you get a swiper, then you might go to hell. Because I had to tell the person, I said, I don't care if change, but if you have a swiper, I'm going to have Some say it didn't let you do that after time. Because somebody can go, just be happy. So be careful. Because postal say, the people are getting smart now. There wouldn't be any Christmas trees. There wouldn't be any Christmas carols no Christmas song. There wouldn't be any Christmas dinner. And there wouldn't be any giving and receiving of gifts. Yes. And honestly, my personal favorite, which has already started, there would not be the most best TV show that ever came out, which is called The Christmas Christmas. Christmas. Oh, I love that. And when I get home, the first thing I'm going to do is turn it on and watch it till I get tired. I'll wait for a commercial, use the bathroom, come back and watch it for the next 10 hours. I love that show. Don't ask me what's wrong with it, but I do. But the point is to say, now with all those things that there was no Christmas, if there was no Christmas to celebrate, guess what? People still going to love this Christmas. It doesn't, I understand what people are saying, but people are still going to wear some ugly things. There are going to be people that are still going to eat candy, whether they diabetic or not. Insulin is high, they're still going to eat it. There are going to be still people going to stand close to Walmart or in front of the Walmart asking for money. There are still going to be people who are going to eat dinner on Christmas Day, whether it, be, it may not be filet de nom, it may be cube steak, but they're going to still have dinner on 25th of December. And believe it or not, if there wasn't a Christmas, people are still going to give gifts and receive gifts anyway. So what I'm saying is, notice if there was no Christmas, nothing really changes. Except the mindset of people of Jesus. If there was no Christmas, I guarantee you, there would still be folks roasting chestnuts on an open fire. Yes, sir. I used to think that was a dumbest song until you get in the garden and you start doing, hey, that's cool. So what I'm saying is, I get it. And even if there wasn't any Christmas, if it's cold outside, Jack Frost will still be walking and tapping you on the nose. Right. Notice there's certain things that don't change. So even if there was no Christmas Day to celebrate, the Bible still teaches that before Christmas was ever instituted, that the world had been given the gift of salvation already. So whether or not Christmas is that, that doesn't have anything to do with your salvation. Christmas started, I forgot what year it was. I think it was 400 and something. We can Google it. But folks have been saved before Christmas, right? So Christmas doesn't change your gift of salvation. Amen. John 3rd chapter, verses 14 through 18. The gift of salvation, as Moses was lifted up, the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have, ever, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. So he who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only God, the Son of God. So Ephesians 2nd chapter, verse number 8, For by grace you are saved through faith, and not of yourselves, is the gift of God. We've been already been given the gift, so tell me whether or not Martin Luther King has to do anything with your salvation. Does Memorial Day have anything to do with your salvation? Mother's Day, Father's Day, uh, Fourth of July, I'm sure there's other ones. What's the one we really cook at? We get a big cook, um, the one in September. Labor Day. They're all holidays that you get paid to be off for some people. That doesn't 
doesn't change your salvation. So don't beat up people for wanting to celebrate a day like there's no other day like the other day. So you need to be mindful that the gift of God is eternal life given by God. So if there was no Christmas to celebrate, the Bible still teaches that before Christmas was ever instituted, the word had been given the forgiveness of sin. So we mean telling I already had forgiveness of sin before Christmas? Yeah. Matthew, first chapter, verses 20 through 21. I want to read all that. First John, second chapter, verse number two. As he himself is the propitiation for our sins, and not for yours only, but also for the whole world. So we have forgiveness of sins, the gift of salvation, and if there was no Christmas to celebrate, and we say before it was ever instituted, the world was still share the gospel. So was the people sharing the gospel before Christmas ever instituted? Think about what I'm saying, because you got people that will argue with something. We were already doing it before. So Christmas is just another holiday that you can use in order to share the gospel. Yeah. You should be able to share the gospel on Memorial Day too, as a memorial. Mother's Day, you should be able to share the gospel Mother's Day, Father's Day. This one day doesn't make you a heathen because you're celebrating. All I keep saying, every time someone says that to me, well, make sure that you don't eat none, don't go to the Christmas party, don't eat no Christmas food, don't take no Christmas gift, don't do nothing. Stop getting on Facebook and crucifying everybody and they were started about this by their hand. All I say is, well, you have to go down, go down. Don't take the day off and get paid. Ask for no pay on that day. I ain't seen no person yet tell me otherwise. So if there was no Christmas, the Bible still teaches that before Christmas was ever instituted, God already left three memorials anyway. The three that he wants you to note without being um, um, a big deal is Water baptism is a memorial. Romans 6, chapter, verses 3 through 6. It's a memorial that God wants you to remember. It points to the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. So this reminds you of a memorial that God instituted. Secondly, the Lord's Supper. It's also another constant reminder of his death. 1 Corinthians 11, chapter, starting verse 23 through 26. We're reminded of his death, his burial, and his resurrection, and what he's done. Third, I worship on the first day of the week. When we come together on Sunday, it reminds us all of his resurrection. Matthew 28, verse number 1. And then, of course, Acts 27. So we got three things that God really holds us up, important for us to understand. Until you get this, you'll never understand this. And you never under, really come to the understanding of why we come on the first day of the week. It's a memorial that we have to celebrate. So, the same Jesus that was celebrated as a baby is the same Jesus that celebrated as a crucified baby. He's the same person. So, we have to be mindful without, when we, we represent or we celebrate his death and burial resurrection, remind you. Every Sunday, every should be, every member of the Church of Christ celebrates his death, his burial, and resurrection. But if Jesus didn't come, there would never be a death. That makes sense? So in essence, we are celebrating his birth for coming down here. Therefore, if he never got birth, he would never be on his earth, he would never die, and we would never have salvation of our sins. Yeah. So the point is, folks arguing about you celebrating his birthday. Well, technically, we do it every Sunday. So stop making arguments for stuff that doesn't matter. We celebrate it every Sunday because without there being a birth, there cannot be a day. So, Jesus wants everybody to make a commitment to him. Not just on the 25th of December, but make it a lifetime commitment. That's the whole point that I want us to get. It's, that's an issue, that's a day, that some people are going to act right because it's Christmas. Amen. But Jesus wants you to know, I want a lifetime commitment, not just a day commitment. That some people that only have, that say they treat Jesus, or they treat God like a, um, a parent that doesn't live, live, far, live too far away from him because they only give weekend business. Are you just only a weekend business Christian? Only time you holler at God is when you need something, or when you want to see Him is on the weekend. That's the only time you can give Him any of your time. 
So if we understand that, your status as a Christian has nothing to do with Christmas. That's the bottom line. If you want to celebrate, notice I keep saying, if you want to celebrate, because if a person give me a gift for Christmas, I'm taking her one. <laughs> My conscience is going to be like, well, I don't think I ought to take that. If you feel good enough to come by and put a tree up in my house, more power to you, but I'm going to call you and tell you to come take it down too. Okay. This is just, what I'm saying is just understand, if you don't want, you don't want to celebrate it, don't have people who believe that you're supposed to be the child of God, that you're supposed to be the Christian, you're killing Christ by your actions. By this thing right here, with one of the smallest members of the body, it's one of the most dangerous members that can kill many of people by this. There's many people that don't, won't even come to church because of this, something you've seen and how you've acted. December 21st is just, it may be a day for them to remember. It's also a day for you to remember. But God wants a lifetime commitment. So therefore, it doesn't change your status as a Christian. It doesn't, Christmas doesn't change your position for salvation. And it doesn't change your, your forgiveness of sin. So Christmas is another day just like every other day. So if again, if you have any questions about anything I said, come see me afterwards. I will be happy to explain to you. But if you don't want to celebrate it, that's fine. But don't meet other people who will. So here's the best part. According to Romans 14, 14 chapters 4 through 6 and Colossians 2, 26. If you do celebrate and observe Christmas as a Christian, it still does not change anything. You are still saved if you live right. You are still saved if you obey Him. You are still saved if you've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. You are still saved if you are in Christ and in the church. The holiday doesn't change anything. So not only are you as a Christian, or to use this time of the year to show love, compassion, and share gospel to non-believers, you should be showing this love and compassion all year round. So instead of or why should say, why are you being focused on giving the right gift? Why are you being focused? Well, I gotta get my baby this, or I gotta give my man this, or I gotta give my girl this, or I gotta go do that. Remember, everything that you give someone is temporal. It's gonna break down or tear up or whatever it is one day. But the one thing that's gonna last forever is if you share the gift of the gospel, which is eternal. That's it. That's the lesson. It's simple, it's in a nutshell. You don't want to celebrate Christmas? Done. If you do, go right ahead. If you cook it, I don't worry. I'm going to find out who is. I got a whole bunch of plates that I bought at Sam. I can go fold up ones and I can just put dates on so I know when they eat. I'm just being messy. I don't know that. But there may be someone here that you're here because of Christmas. You're here because, you know what, it's Christmas. It's time for me to come. Understand that you're here for a reason. You are here because you're supposed to hear that Jesus actually came as a baby. He didn't have to. But he said, I'd rather, matter of fact, Hebrews 12, for the joy they set before him. I'm going to put myself in a position to save everybody. I'm willing to die for everybody. And when I die, he told his disciples constantly, I'm going to rise again on the third day. You believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God? Do you believe that he died upon the cross? Do you believe that he was buried? Do you believe he rose again on the third day? You got the hard part out of the way, which is believe. If you believe that, then you do something about to believe. It simply means you repent of your sins. All they're saying is, I know what's wrong. I'm going to start living right. I'm going to stop living for Satan. I know what's, which way Satan's going. You confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. You open your mouth and say, yes, I believe he is the Son of God. You go on the water grave baptism, and God adds you to the church. From that point on, whether or not you make it to heaven, it's on you. But you have help. You now have an avenue. Membership has its privileges. You can ask God to help you out of a situation that you couldn't before. And if you can't see the bottom line of it, you can ask others to pray for, pray for me. Help me as I get through this. And you never know what God may use you and your trial, your tribulation to help save someone else. So if you're here, understand that you're here for a reason. You didn't come because I got a head out of my house. That's always why I'm here. You may see it that way, but you're here for a reason. So you can celebrate the sun every day and not just on one day. And if you are a child of God and you know that you've been the one crucifying people, telling them that they're going to burn in hell because they got a tree in 
Because this is what this means. That's what that means. Stop it. Stop. Because all you're doing is making people say, you know what? If that's how Christians act, then I don't want to be part of it. Your actions speak louder than words. Amen. So if anyone here can respond to invitation to do so, as we stand and sing a verse of our invitation to song. Yeah. 